Welcome to Metcam Tutorials. In this short video, we show how to make a first connection to Metcam and perform initial settings. Metcam is now powered up and connected to a PC using a Cat5e or higher LAN cable. The Metcam indication LED has turned to a constant green, informing that it has completed its 30 second boot phase and is functioning properly. Note that Metcam will remain in warm-up state for 30 minutes after powering up. We now need to connect with the PC for doing initial settings. Metcam is delivered with a static IP of 192.168.090 and the host name Metcam. We need to set our PC IP to be in the same subnet and with a different identifier. So we open up the Internet Protocol version 4, select IP address and dial it in. So we choose 192.168.0 and 10 with a standard subnet and we say OK. To verify the connection, we open the command prompt and ping Metcam using its IP. We get a reply, we are good to go. We launch our web browser, write the Metcam IP in the address bar and hit enter. We get the login page. There are two built-in users called admin and operator, both without password. We log in using the admin user. Metcam does not have a battery, so every time it powers up, the date time needs to be updated. We press the set date time button. Metcam will retrieve the PC time and use it to update its internal clock. The elapsed time counts the time since power-up. We use the live video to aim Metcam so that the monitored area is in the center of the image. It is important to avoid having close-range objects included in the Metcam field of view. If the web interface is idle for 5 minutes, it will automatically log out and the next time you check, you will be again in the login page. The next thing we need to do is set the range. We go to the settings tab. We enter the distance in meters between Metcam and the main monitored area. The distance should be in the range 10 to 50 meters. We press the set button and get an update success message back. At the lower part of this page, we can see the detection thresholds. We can see the low and high safety thresholds as well as the emissions threshold. We proceed to mark the region of interest. The marker is used to track the ambient temperature of the scene. This data is used to decide on system inhibition. We click on the image to move a white cross. Once we are happy with the location, we press the set ROI button and the white cross turns red. It is advisable to select a man-made object close to the main monitored area. Once the time, distance and region of interest have been set, Metcam starts monitoring. If gas is, is detected, it will issue alarms through the 420 milliamp interface just like any other gas detector. To take full advantage of Metcam's capabilities, we should connect it to site network infrastructure and stream the video information to an ONVIF client or a VMS system. To do this, we configure Metcam to use a dynamic IP. We go to the Network tab. At the top, we see details of the current connection. 
Beneath this, we see the host name box where we can change the host name. The host name is important in a dynamic IP connection since we use it to find Medcam on the network. To change to a dynamic IP, we select the Obtain from DHCP radio button and press the Update Connection button. We will need to terminate the current session and reconnect from the network.